You're tuned in to CIUT 89.5 FM. We have teleported ourselves to the Metro Toronto Convention Centre for the Study and Go Abroad Fair for this afternoon until 4 p.m. Our programs of Fly and Ultra Latino um, have been preempted today, and Caribouni will take on air at 4 p.m., and it will be followed by Across the Universe at 6 p.m. Uh, my name is Shuang, and my friend Nicole and I have been chatting with different schools and exhibitors, learning the different ways of how you can go and study abroad. Uh, we're going to take a walk down the culinary side of things and as well as hospitality. I'm joined by Christian Schering from Swiss Education Group. Hello, Christian. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so tell us, I know that the Swiss Education Group is actually a collection of different schools um, and you can learn anything from culinary to management to hospitality. Um, this is correct. Uh, Swiss Education Group, we are a network of five schools, um, all based in Switzerland, four are hospitality management schools where you can learn anything about tourism, uh, business, uh, even design or hotel operations, events management, and of course we have a culinary arts academy where you can learn all things about culinary and chocolate and pastry here in Switzerland after all. Amazing. Um, this is a very exciting collection of schools, especially for those who love, you know, travel, food. Um, and I want to ask, because it is not the typical university, um, definitely very different application process. So how do students get their mindset ready when thinking about applying to one of these schools? All right. If you're right. We are not a typical university. So our schools have basically just one major, each school. We are really focusing on what we're doing, hospitality and culinary. Um, we do offer undergraduate and postgraduate programs. The application process is very simple and straightforward. Um, you can apply online with us or with one of our representatives, um, filling out an application form, sending it over to the school. Schools will assess it and within one working week we will get back to the students um, and start the application process and the enrollment process. And what kind of typical questions do you ask uh, a prospective student uh, when they are applying? Um, we ask them, of course, first of all, how they found out about us. Um, uh, what they are they like to travel? Are they like to work with people? Do they like um, you know to be a leader and a manager? Because we want to make sure that it's a right fit that the student who comes to us um, choose hospitality or culinary for the right reasons. Uh, because it's an amazing career, uh, but it can be challenging. But it takes you all around the world, and we want to make sure we find the right students who who are up for that challenge. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people have preconceived notions of how these careers might be. Some people might think that you'll be spending a lifetime in a kitchen. In actuality, there's so much endless possibilities. That is correct. Um, this is a question I get all the time. Um, people, when they hear hospitality, they think about that's the guy who brings the food in a restaurant or who greets me at the hotel. When they hear culinary, they think, oh, it's a chef, you say, in the kitchen. Um, that might have been the case in the past, but nowadays it's such an amazing industry. It's growing very fast, and you have lots and lots of opportunities. Um, think about culinary. You can be a chef, but you can be an executive chef, a sous chef, or a pastry chef. Lots of people open up their own business. Um, you know, they own a restaurant, their own food business. Business. Um, it can all go the way, all the way to management, and even nowadays with Instagram and all the social media, we have people who are bloggers, who are influencers, um, who do something food in the media. So you have lots and lots of opportunities apart from just being a chef. Mm -hmm. And you yourself have a very interesting career with culinary because you started uh, in culinary but then you actually moved into sales marketing and more of the business side of things. Um, that's correct. So after I graduated from high school, didn't really know what to do, tried out different things, um, ended up with hospitality in the first place and then it took me to culinary. I did an uh, apprenticeship in culinary, did my food and beverage diploma, did my culinary diploma um, and then actually worked around the world. It took me from Germany via Switzerland all the way to Southeast Asia and uh, Singapore, where I live right now. Um, and this is a good example how a career can go. You start somewhere with the F&B or hospitality, culinary, and then um, along the way you get so many opportunities. You meet so many interesting people. Um, and I myself now work in, um, in marketing and sales. Yeah, very exciting. Amazing. And I feel like, you know, food is some 
of one of the you know universal combining factors that joins us together. So it's definitely a medium where people definitely come and connect together. Um, and I feel like that's kind of essentially things that you look for for people who are interested in into getting into those fields. Um, that's right. We are looking at people who are open-minded, who, who want to try new things, who want to work together with people, uh, be of service to other people, um, and yes, connect with other people. Um, you always need to be able to learn from somebody else, you know, different background, different history, um, different cultures. This makes it exciting, but you need to be open-minded and you need to be up for it. Mm -hmm. So what is a typical day like when you are a culinary student? Uh, what is the setting of the classroom? All right. Um, so not to worry, our classes are from Monday to Friday. Uh, Saturday, Sunday is no school. Um, a typical day starts uh, very usually. It starts in the morning. We serve breakfast at the school to our students, and usually classes start uh, from 8 o'clock. Um, you will be in very small classes in our school, so 12 students work together with a chef lecturer, and they go through the different modules. It's a very practical and hands-on training. You spend on around four hours in the training kitchen, followed by a lunch break. Then, depending on the schedule, you might have another class in the afternoon or you do some uh, studies in our library uh, in the afternoon. So on and about, you will finish around 4 or 5 p.m. It's kind of a normal day. We are not stressing our students like from early morning to late evening. Um, but it um, can be very intense, especially we have lots of events where our students are involved. Um, and it's kind of a real-life environment um, what we are teaching our students in. That's very exciting because it's very uh, practical and they also kind of get to apply what they learn right away during those events that you've mentioned. Um, that's correct. So we are not playing and pretending it's a real life environment. Um, the food our students preparing um, is actually being used in the school. So we are not wasting anything or throwing anything away. As I said, we have a lot of events going on. We have a lot of visitors and VIP guests where our students are involved. As well as our students um, are supposed to go on a practical, uh, on an internship. You out there studies. So there they will have a real life experience in a real life business um, in Switzerland or all across the world and can apply what they learned. Because mm -hmm. everything is happening in real time. There is definitely a lot of pressure to basically perform and what the outcome that you create is ending up someone that gets to enjoy that. So uh, it's definitely a very exciting practicum and internship. Um, that's correct. But we um, prepare our students. So we take the students from the beginner level and go with them step by step. We teach them also about food safety, sanitation, because you're right, um, our students prepare something and somebody else is eating it. So it needs to be safe, it needs to be secure. But we teach our students and we prepare them um, also for those challenges. Um, and it's an amazing journey to see when they are with us. Um, uh, when they come back from their first internship, they're full of confidence, they're so excited. And when they graduate, they graduate as a personality. Uh, they know what they have learned and they're ready to go out and conquer the world. Amazing. I think uh, when you mentioned that, you know, they definitely go from someone who uh, probably doesn't have a lot of cooking experience. So when you're looking for prospective students, if, you know, they just happen to be interested in culinary arts, but they actually don't have a lot of experience, um, would that be okay for them to also apply? This is exactly the people we are looking for. So you don't need to have any prior knowledge or any skills. Um, the only thing you need to have is a passion for food or as an interest in food. You want to work with food. Um, this is what it needs. The rest you will learn at school. We take you from the beginner level with absolutely no knowledge and no uh, experience. And we manage to bring you up to a master chef level throughout our studies. Exciting. Uh, let's now talk a little bit about the flip side of things, uh, the management, the tourism. Um, how do a, a typical day or program run uh, in those schools? All right. Our hospitality schools, they run on the same schedule, and even one of our hospitality schools shares a campus with the culinary school. So um, a typical day looks very similar. Um, it starts in the morning with breakfast. Uh, classes start at 8. Um, those classes are a little bit shorter. They're usually either uh, 60 minutes or 90 minutes, uh, same like a lecturer. Students go to various uh, projects with various lecturers. Um, it includes inc uh, excursions as well. We take our students out of the classroom, bring them to the industry. Again, a little bit real-life experience um, to also apply what they have learned. 
Mm -hmm. Exciting. And I know that, you know, being in the hospitality industry, a lot of it is interacting with individuals from all over the world. Um, how do they, I guess, like prepare for that when they actually haven't been abroad or um, they haven't traveled much? So they don't have exposure into that industry, but they just have an interest into that. Uh, well, the best thing um, is come to our campus. We are a very, very international school. We have students from over 100 different countries joining us. So the moment a student comes to our school and lives on campus, he is exposed to that international feeling. He gets to know people from all across the world. Um, in the classroom, you are together with people from 30 different nationalities and you will learn step by step by living with them, learning with the other students um, how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of learning and being abroad actually happens uh, also outside of the classroom you know it's how you get around this new city it's how you make new friends um, and it's how you basically live on your own so there's definitely two layers of education as well um, yes that's a part we can't write in a brochure usually uh, yes. <laughs> and can't write on a website but as an experience it's, it's definitely part of our studies when students come to Switzerland Switzerland is a very small but a very international country um, and our students travel around and we encourage them to discover the place, um, look around. Switzerland is a very safe and secure country, so it's very easy and, and convenient to do that. And this is also part of the learning experience. Uh, live in that other country, which is very open, very international, um, and make that experience. And on top of it, um, enjoy the beautiful scenery and the mountains and the lakes and the snow. And the pastries and chocolates that you or your cla uh, classmates might make? Definitely. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Swiss chocolate and Swiss pastry, that's one uh, part of it, and all our students love it. And being so centrally located, you know, they have a chance to travel and see so many different places all throughout Europe as well. Um, this is what lots of our students do. As I say, classes from Monday to Friday. So usually on weekends, the campus is quite empty. Um, students really travel around, and especially during term break, which is uh, an hour school, just two weeks between the terms. Most of our students, they don't go back home. Um, they travel all around Europe and it's so convenient. You can just take a train from, a, from anywhere in Switzerland and within two or three hours you're in other major cities in Europe and can discover the place. Amazing. So for students who are interested to look into the Swiss Education Group, um, talk about timelines and resources and what should they do next? All right. So timelines is... Um, the minimum entry requirement into our schools and our programs, you need to be 18 years old and you need to have graduated from high school. That is a, a basic. Um, and then, well, get yourself ready. We have different intakes per year. We have four intakes throughout the year in January, April, July and October, so it's very flexible. Um, but I encourage every student who is interested, start early enough with the application process. We usually recommend on and about four months uh, latest before the intake starts, you should start with your application. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Christian. You're most welcome. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Awesome. Uh, that was Christian from the Swiss Education Group. We're here and taking another musical break, uh, and Nicole will speak to another exhibitor right after this. Enjoy all the chicken rice and laksa and all that. Uh, yes, I do. Well, I'm, I'm away actually since three weeks. I have another week in the UK before I can go back home. So. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Amazing.